Alexei, what's the name of your favorite map? You know, the symmetrical Kazakhstan one, the esports one. Yeah. What is it called? What the f is it called? Oh, I remember only its tag, Lost City. Its current name, in fact, I don't remember. I remember its working name, Lost Temple or something. Hmm, no, I can't remember what it's named now. It's an important thing. You can't tell players you forgot what it's called. <laughs> People, can you hear me? Cause it's time, yes, it's time to be free. That was the first update when we realized that there was a limit to the trust the audience gave. I mean, before that, before 9.0, I was in the community back then and I was the head of CIS community department. So whatever we released, any small thing, the players would be delighted. They liked everything and they were always satisfied with everything we did. Update 9.0 was a kind of a wake-up call. We didn't even realize what was happening at first. I remember I was on the balcony with Levon Grigarian and Denis Subovsky. Denis was the administrative director back then. We were discussing 9.0, which we had just released. And Denis says, you know, I entered the game, I played a bit, and it had a very low FPS rate. Everything was lagging and barely moving. Until then, we'd never had such problems on a large scale. So I said to him, it was probably something with your PC and so on. Then I entered the forum half an hour later, saw the ticket the players sent to player support, and realized that it was a total sh I don't know what else I can say about it. It was a legendary failure. That was mainly about low performance. We did a lot of things in that update, but the players came down hard on the performance drop. And then they've remembered all the things we had previously done or hadn't done, and all the bugs and mistakes they had forgiven us for up to that point. But that was the moment when everyone unleashed their wrath on us. As they say, anyone can offend an artist, and if you're a graphics programmer, it's easy to offend an artist, and it's twice as easy to offend a graphics programmer. First, you just say it doesn't look good, then you say it works slowly. Well, I should say the criticism was partially deserved because we did indeed rush it. And we didn't unlock the potential we put into it. Technologically, if you looked under the hood, it was well implemented, I think, but there was no content. Here I mean the things that players could see and feel. They didn't see any drastic changes. Yes, the garage looked better, but they didn't see those changes on the maps. And this was on top of historical battles, which, we can say this, weren't done well. The concept was awesome, but it seems that only six years later, with our Berlin PvE event, we've come close to how normal historical battles should more or less look. It was a negative experience that, let's say, we probably really needed. I think it was maybe not that massive, but because it was very hard for the company in terms of reputation, I remember that moment very clearly. That was, but again, in my opinion, that rush was the reason. I think we shouldn't have rushed it. And we had to react to it somehow. But it was hard to do that because we overhauled a lot of things and we completely revamped the graphics system. So we didn't know how to approach it to make the right fixes. Our 3D programmers worked all day long to fix it. Well, in terms of fixing, we eventually fixed it. But it took much time. It took a really long time to fix it and to make it good. Yeah, I think it took half a year or eight months to reach the proper 9.0 level.
And the final result was much better because not only did we fix the graphics engine, but we also refined many other subsystems and fixed a lot of things regarding performance, sound, scripts, how it worked on hard disks, resource caching, and other such things that hadn't previously caused that much trouble because there weren't problems with graphics. And here we fixed graphics and many other things. As a result, the performance on different systems was better than before 9.0. But this is what people needed to realize, because everyone still had that feeling that World of Tanks would lag no matter what you did. I remember that we had a gameplay trailer for that update. The T-54s were rolling underwater on Erlenberg, right on the river bottom. You can still find the trailer. And players trolled us that it was all over. The project was going down with all our T-54s and HD tanks. We had never faced such a backlash from players before. Until the end of 2013, the global map was the only clan activity. Anton and Misha might remember the pain. Do you remember how I used to come around always talking about and saying, let's do this, let's do that, and let's do this? And it was like, oh, f off, just f off, just go. This was the story of clan wars until 2013 at least. I remember there was even a big open letter from clan players. Well, its author was Dmitry Grigorov, a.k.a. Fluke, a famous field commander. He was a commander in the Aces clan, the former 7th Panzer Division of the Steel Alliance. I think they were also a part of the Red Clan later on, I mean the Red Alliance. Yeah, they were in Red A. They were the guys nicknamed Joker, Classic, and Fluke. He worked for us for a long time. Dimitri dealt with the global map and strongholds for a long time. So they wrote an open letter because the global map was laggy. It was old and it constantly crashed. Of course, the events were awesome, like the Atlantis, conquering America and so on. But they were glitchy, crashy, and we didn't add anything. So the player patience ran out. People went to the forum and wrote tons of text. We reacted quickly on behalf of the company. We released the video with Kirill, replied on the forum so it became clear in general that we had to do something about it. I'm Kirill Mull, the Wargaming.net producer, and I'll tell you about the global map. We try to minimize risks related to technical failures. We're trying to solve this problem at the moment. And there's one reason for that. We didn't have the workforce. As a product, Clan Wars hasn't been brought to its logical conclusion yet. The idea was to allow clans to fight against each other when they want and where they want, in a virtual space that wasn't tied to the global map. This was on the one hand. And on the other hand, the idea was to give clans something perfectly visible a visual and not only visual display of their clan. The global map was a sort of a wall of fame. If a clan managed to get to the global map and conquer profitable provinces in Europe or America, the clan was obviously worth something. And everyone can see it. Here's the global map. The provinces are painted in clan colors. Here's the flag. Here's the emblem. The clan is cool. There's no question about it, but not all clans had that. The idea was to give this visual display of a clan to all clans. And this something would be a stronghold. What is a stronghold? It's some kind of clan property, a clan structure, a clan castle that a clan builds and creates with their own effort. They battle for it, and it's also an embodiment of clan success. This was the idea we had. I think when the developers first saw the concept, they were shocked. There was a clan base, there were dynamic battles, and there was everything that was in the client. The important thing is that we wanted to do that in the client. Yes, we wanted to implement that in the client because web implementation wasn't good at the moment. Later, we transferred strongholds to web implementation, and that was the right decision because we were no longer tied to the World of Tanks development cycle. 
We even tried to connect strongholds to the global map. Qualification was there and so on and so forth. Yeah, we did that. We even tried to connect it somehow via industrial resource, the currency of strongholds mode. But they are different activities, quite different. The global map is about politics, about war, intrigue, scandals, behind the scenes fighting and so on. All the things we love, treachery, backstabbing, so on. And strongholds are about a fair fight. Yeah, the good old global map has survived many things and it will survive many others as well. Strongholds didn't become a replacement, rather it was an addition, equal in certain aspects, not so equal in other aspects, but still. Yeah, but the global map. Roughly at the same time, we started holding regular, how do we call them, campaigns? Yeah, campaigns campaigns. There were also private events and campaigns that occurred roughly at that time. So it wasn't an accident that the global map survived. It just caught its second wind. And we also started giving players clan tanks as a reward for those campaigns. Oh, and there was such a fuss about those clan tanks. There are players who can get these tanks and I can't get it. It's discrimination. Yeah, people who wanted and people didn't want those tanks fought tooth and nail on the forum. There were lengthy and heated disputes there. People, can you hear me? Миша категорически был против любых движух, которые Michael was harshly against any activities for teams with less than 10 players. As I remember, that was the message. Well, I don't remember already. I tried to analyze it, but I don't remember. I do remember. Because I was, you know, between the protesters and the sympathizers. It was simple, a very simple story. Esports started in 2011, at the end of 2011. But let's not forget what time that was. The game was only establishing itself. So you either develop strange, indistinct, and seemingly unnecessary esports, or you create new vehicle branches, maps, and the global map as well. So what we had back then was mainly content, and that was our priority. Those who worked on esports couldn't convince the people who made decisions and managed resources that those resources should be allocated to esports. It was like, you have the game, do what you can with your current capacity and we'll work on what we need. We had just an endless list, a backlog of things, features, maps, vehicles, and if we talk about 2014 to 2015, when everything started to lag. Everyone was stressed, there was a lack of sleep, the game lagged, the players were leaving, this and that. And you're talking esports. If there was a sort of competition, that was what it was. And the format was also strange. I mean, we've always had 15 v 15 battles. There were also company battles in 10 slash 90 format. It was kind of strange. Company battles appeared because we were experimenting with formats. Yeah, there was the Ural Steel tournament in 2011 when 60 people were playing on one stage simultaneously. Well, not 60, fewer. There were two teams of 14 players each. I mean, two pairs of 14 v 14 players, so 56 people. That was hard. And the game is absolutely, we can see it now with the example of PUBG. The game was, 
Well, it didn't have that esports nature that underlies Counter Strike, Dota, and so on. It's not only about the RNG factor, the game was about something else. All in all, the 7 42 concept won, and we went with that. A year later, or even sooner, we changed it to 7 54. But we still lacked dynamic battles. It was boring. It was boring and impossible to watch because no one was doing anything in battle. A breaking point. There were two breaking points in esports. The 7 42 format was fun until the teams study all the strategies. That's one. And two, a player could play artillery in one battle and the Leicht Traktor in another. This is mainly about Eclipse from Navi or Red Rush before that. It was confusing. In my opinion, the point when esports became watchable and fun was the transition to the 7 54 format and the attack defense rule. That was more or less interesting to watch. Then it was played in tier 10 vehicles and it was okay. But the first grand finals, I remember watching it and thinking, oh gosh, why is this happening? Because it was very boring. And the top moment was, I think, it was in 2016 when Hellraisers were playing against Navi. An apple wow got stuck. Yeah, I got stuck on the cliff map. So Hellraiser's lost, and then a warning sign appeared there after some time saying, Caution, falling apples. Oh my god, he can't get out. Apple wow has just gotten stuck and can't move. This will be a victory for the Natus Vincere team. Who would have thought that physics would help? No one could have expected such an epic end to the finals. This fall cost them a title. People, can you hear me? And tank races were held later that year. Oh, it was the football event first, and then, yes, races in the fall. Yeah, there was the football event, and people liked it in general, despite it being assembled from mud and straw. There was a lot of duct tape in its release version, but it was fun, and the players asked for more. I don't even remember where it all started. I think it was Vlad Markov who came up with the idea. He was a big football fan and the lead of level artists, so they made a prototype on a napkin, presented it, and that was it. The football event was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome, and the races were even more awesome. There was also that big monumental racing tournament, but Alexei can talk about that. Well, we introduced the mode and then thought, why don't we launch something large-scale, a big competition? So I approached Anton and said, listen, let's get in the Guinness World Records as the biggest tournament. At that time, we used to make it into the Guinness World Records from time to time, for example, for most players online simultaneously, and so on. And there was just an enormous number of registrations, about 200 to 250,000. But some players withdrew because many people wanted to play solo, and it was a 3v3 tournament. Yeah, 3v3. So 50,000 teams took part in the tournament. And we set a record in the Guinness World Records book as the biggest online tournament in an MMO game. Something like that. It was fueled by pure enthusiasm. And you could get an earful from Serb for that. He rooted hard for authenticity at that moment. If you remember the discussion about Update 9.0, we had five or six HD vehicle models in it. So the discussion reached a point when Yuri Pashalak, our historical consultant, said that there couldn't be scuff marks from tankers' butts on metal, that they got out of the tank in a different way and it should look differently. And there were heated discussions about that. It took a lot of convincing to change Sergei's mind back then. You had to spend a long time proving to him we needed that feature at the moment. 
that it would be good because there was a lot of negativity and it would be very fun to play despite some implementation imperfections. I must say it was also a super important milestone because we had never had two events in one year. So they laid the foundations for we could experiment with them. There were certain admissions and they were interesting and temporary, those events. After that, our approach to such things became more consistent and our hands were freer. There was a situation when we lived close to the venue and we stayed in a sports hostel of some sort. And there was a feeling that we were being watched even at night. They were watching what things we were going to leave and where. And you could see guys literally lying on the top of the garages in front of the windows when you turned out the lights. I don't know, maybe they were just resting there. Nothing happened to us and it was okay in that hotel, that hostel. But yeah, several guys were held up and asked for their smokes, money and their phones. Was it Ural Steel? Yeah, so they presented their phones, cigarettes, and money in full, and in return got, hmm, how can I say, cash back in the form of SIM cards, a cigarette per person, and information that if they're stopped later on, they could say they had already met Igor and it's all good. The thing was also that guys had quite expensive equipment in their backpacks. There were some serious cameras with expensive lenses and other stuff. If those guys who held them up realized that a treasure trove was being carried on their backs, things might have gotten much worse. They'll watch this video later and think, oh man, we messed up! Success was that close.